Hello everybody and welcome back to another Flutter tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is actually dealing with page navigation and we're going to be continuing to build this app that we've been working on since the beginning of this series. So what we're actually going to be doing is making a home page, which will kind of let us type in our username. We're not going to do any passwords or validation or anything like that, at least for right now, but we'll let the user type in some name and then that will be the name that they're given when they actually create a post. Because if you notice right now, whenever we make a post, we're just simply putting Tim as the name, but obviously if someone else is coming onto the phone or someone else is using the app, their name is probably not Tim. So what I'm going to try to do here is make a page where we can get the user's name and then I want to pass that over to the home page that we already have created here so that when they actually make a post, the author of that post is whatever name they typed in. So that's what we're going to be working on here. But the first thing I want to do is actually show us how we can clean this code up just a little bit. So looking through this code here, we can see it's starting to get a little bit messy and there's quite a few different things in this file and they're not all really related to each other in any way. So what I want to do is I want to make a bunch of different files that store all of these different classes just so that as this app continues to get larger and larger, it's a lot easier for us to figure out where things are and keep things kind of separated into what they actually are doing. So to do this, all we're going to do is just make a new file inside of this lib folder. So you can see on the left hand side of my screen here, I'll zoom in just a tiny bit. Hopefully that'll be a little bit better for you guys. But now let's go to lib. Let's create new file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to name all of these files, whatever the classes that I'm going to store in them dot dart. So in this case, I'm going to make one called post. So I'm going to say post dot dart like that. And now I'm just going to simply take this post class like this and I'm going to delete it from here and put it inside of this file. There we go, that's as easy as it is. Now we're gonna have to handle some import statements and all of that, but that's what we're gonna be doing is just separating a few, a few things out and then we'll go in and import everything that we need. Okay, so next, uh, my app. So I will leave my app and this void function in this main file right here, which is the one that runs, but I'm gonna take everything else out and separate it where it needs to go. So first, let's take my home page. So this is a stateful widget. So I'm going to grab my home page like this. I'm going to copy all of that. Let's make a new file. Let's call it my home page dot dart and let's put it in here. Awesome. Now ignore all of the squigglies. We'll fix those after. So let's delete that from inside of here. Now we're going to take our text input widget. Now I just realized and someone had actually commented this, so thanks to whoever did that. We have a spelling mistake in this. I'm sure you guys probably saw that, but I just realized. So I can simply add a D there to make that actually widget instead of widget or whatever it is right now. Uh, but I'm just gonna simply copy this and I'm gonna find all references, or actually, sorry, I'm gonna hit Control H. So Control H is find and replace. So Control H on the keyboard. And instead of text input widget with just the G, we're gonna put the D where it needs to go. So now hopefully that should change everywhere. So I'm just going to keep hitting hitting enter to change it everywhere that we need to change it. And there we go. So regardless, fix that spelling mistake. I'm going to grab this whole text input widget now. I'm going to put that inside of its own new file. So let's go text input widget like that dot dart. OK, that's looking good. Let's go back here. We can get rid of text input widget, which we did. Now let's make a post list. And I think that should be the last thing. Yes, it should be. All right. So now one more file, new file, and let's call this post list dot dart. We can put that in here and now let's start handling our import statements. So in all of these files, I'm going to take this first import statement here, which is importing uh, the flutter material dot dart, which essentially is just what we need to use um, that gives us things like material app, stateless widget, all of the stuff that we've been using that is kind of proprietary to flutter. So we just need to import that in all these different files. So we're going to import that one here. We're going to import that one in text input widget like that and then in my home page as well. Now we don't need to put it inside of post because post doesn't use any flutter stuff. It's just our own class that we created. So we don't need to actually import the flutter material package because we don't use that here. Now inside of my home page, which I am right now, we can see that we have a post. So I need to import the post class so that we can use that. And then I also need to import text input widget, which is now going to have to have a D there instead of uh, just the G as well as post list. So let's import all of those. So to import those, all we have to do is just import the package that stores them. So we're going to go import our single quotation marks and then inside of here, I'm just going to use the things that I need to import. So in this case, it's going to be post dot dart. 
like that. And let's just copy this. And what else do we need to import? We need to import post list dot dart. And finally, I believe we need the text input widget. So let's get that one. Okay, so text input widget, post list and post. So that's good for this file. Looks like this one has some problems right now. So let's import post because we need that. So we're going to say import and that should be post dot dart. Awesome. And anything else in here? No, that one looks good. And then my homepage, we need to import my homepage. So let's do that. Sorry, not my homepage from the main file. Let's import Oops, my home page dot dart. Okay, sweet. So now everything is imported. And if I've done this successfully, let's look at our emulator here. And I think everything should still be working. Uh, yeah, it looks like it is. So actually, when I type some text, for some reason, the text is not showing up. Uh, maybe I need to reload this app just to see if that's going to work. All right, so I was realizing that for some reason, my messages weren't popping up when I was typing something in. So you can see like I was go like that and just nothing would show up. And then I realized that's because I called the widget callback after I cleared the controller field. So of course we can't do that. What I need to do is I need to call this callback before I actually clear the controller field. So that was just a silly mistake on my part. So if you guys have that same mistake, make sure you fix that. That's just inside of text input widget inside of the click um, callback method or whatever you want to call it. I just had this widget right here after the clear. So of course we got to swap those around. So let's just have a look now and make sure this is working because for some reason I couldn't get that. And there we go. So now it's working. Looks like our like buttons are working as well. And now we just need to actually make the original kind of login page if you want to call it that so that these authors will be accurate based on what we typed in. So what I'm going to do is actually make another file and I'll show you how we can navigate between pages, but let's make the page first and then we'll do that. So new file and in this case, I'm just going to call this one login.dart and then now let's just make a uh, login page. So I'm going to steal this import from one of these packages here that we need. So package colon flutter slash material dot dart and let's now make actually a stateful widget that's going to hold our login page. The reason I'm making it stateful is because the user is going to be typing in text there. And ideally, I would like to save the text that they have typed in there. So say they exit the messaging app and come back in or sorry, exit the page where they're messaging and go back to the login page. It has the last thing they typed in. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to type STFUL. That stands for stateful. If you press enter, it brings this thing up, which we've seen. And now what I'm going to do is just call this login page like that. OK, so super simple. And then what I'm going to do is inside of login page state, I'm going to make a string and I'm just going to call this name. So string name like that. Awesome. And that's really all we need. Now I'm actually going to go over to my home page and we can see that my home page is using a scaffold with an app bar and a body and all of this. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to steal what we have right here and I'm kind of going to kind of replicate this story over in login. So inside our build method, I've just copied all this scaffold stuff. Let's put it over here. Let's replace container. And now we have our own scaffold. Now we're not going to be using text input widget or even a column at all here for body. So let's actually get rid of all of that. Uh, but we will make our own body in just one second. I can get rid of one of those set of brackets. OK, so now just keep things clean. Um, I like to usually do this. I'm just going to say, actually, should we do this? Um, yeah, let's go class body like that. And we'll actually have to make this a stateful widget. So let's go stateful widget. Let's just call this body inside of here. And then we can simply go body and we can put body like that. Uh, now that actually means that I don't think my login page needs to be a stateful widget. I think I can just make this a regular widget and then actually the body can be a stateful widget that stores the name. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, my apologies on that, guys. We're going to keep this scaffold, so I'll copy that. But I'm going to delete everything else I've done here and just make a regular widget. So I'm just going to make a stateless widget. If you type ST, it should show up here and you can tab to it. And we're just going to call this one login page like that. And then we'll return the scaffold with the app bar and the body. Awesome. So that's what we need for login page. I think that should be good for now. I'm just going to check my other screen uh, to make sure I didn't mess anything up. Yep. So that looks good to me. And now let's actually go inside of body and let's add a state, not there, sorry, but inside of here for the name. So let's say string name like that. 
Awesome. Now I'm also going to make a text uh, editing controller here. We're going to need to put a text field, right? That the user is going to type into. So we're going to say text editing controller, which we've seen before. I'm just going to call this controller equals new text editing controller like that. Awesome. So now we have our name and we have our controller. And now let's actually start kind of building the UI here and putting what we need. So what I'm going to do is inside of my build method, I'm actually going to start by putting in a line class. What this is going to do is allow us to align our widget in the very center of the screen. I think we used this previously, uh, but it's really easy to use. You just go align and then you can pick the alignment. So alignment is one of the arguments here. And then I'll say alignment dot and you can simply put oops if I spell alignment right you can simply put center so that will put it right in the center of course if you want to put it somewhere else you can put it in you know bottom center bottom left bottom right so on and so forth but we're going to keep it in the center like that and what we're going to do is we're going to say child and we're actually going to make the child equal to padding and I'm going to add some padding for whatever widget we decide to put in here and I just want to make sure it's separated off the walls a little bit so it doesn't seem like it's extending the entire screen uh, and give it say like you know 10 pixels of padding or something like that so we're going to say for padding we're going to go padding colon and then I think we can do edge oops edge insets like that and then we're going to do dot all and what this says is what padding do we want on all sides of the widget and in this case I want to put 10 pixels of padding on every side and then we're going to go child for padding I'm going to add a comma oops uh, and I was hoping that was going to tab us down the line, but for child, now we'll put the text field that we actually want to display. So essentially what we've done is we're aligning everything right in the center. We, for the child of this alignment has 10 pixels of padding. So we're going to put whatever inside of here will be padded by 10 pixels on all sides. And then we're going to put a text field. So we've used text field before. We're going to say text field like that. And if I click save, it brings us to a next line. I'm going to say controller colon controller because it's going to be equal to the controller we have here. We could reference this with this dot controller, but it doesn't matter whatever way we want. I guess I'll just leave this here to differentiate. And then what else do we need for our text field? Well, we need that input decoration so we can add, um, you know, a border. We can add a nice little label text or something like that. So let's go. I believe it is decoration. That's going to be equal to input decoration. And if we Come on, hit enter here. Let me go to the next line. Awesome. So input decoration, which we have right here. And then for input decoration, there's a ton of different stuff we can put in here. Like we can put, you know, a prefix icon, a suffix icon, the text we have, what happens when we press the button, all of that. And in fact, if I go over to text input widget, which is one of the files we have right here, we can actually see all the stuff for decoration right here. So rather than typing all this out again, I'm just going to copy what I have here for text input widget. So all the stuff related to input decoration. Decoration. You can see prefix icon, label text, suffix icon, icon, so on and so forth. So let's take all that and let's simply replace that here. Okay, so I accidentally copied the decoration tag too. That seems okay. Um, is all good here? Am I missing a bracket? Yes, I am. So let me add one more bracket and there we go. Now the indentation is correct. And now let's just start changing some of these things that actually make sense. So rather than type a message, I'm going to say type Oops, type your name like that. Uh, so that will be what our, um, what do you call it, label text is. For the prefix icon, this is the icon that comes before uh, where we're actually typing. I'm going to make this a person. So I'm going to say icon dot people or is there a one for a person? Awesome, there is. Now, the reason I'm making it person is because like you are typing in your name. So I figured that made sense. And then for the suffix icon, rather than making it a send button, let's make it a like finish button or something. Do we have that or like done? Yeah, done. You know, check button. That's fine for now. We can leave it at that. Uh, the color blue is fine. And the tool tip, do we want post message? Probably not. Let's just do uh, for this button, I guess. Uh, let's say submit. You know, that, that's good enough. That's all we really need. The on pressed, we have this dot click, so that's fine. Let's actually make a method inside of here, which it can be called. So we'll call it this dot click, and that will just handle what happens when we actually press that button that's within this text field. So for anyone confused right now, the input decoration is storing the prefix icon, it's storing the label text, and then it's going to have the suffix icon, which is actually going to be a button that we can press to submit our name.
So exact same that we did when we were looking at text input widget. Now, in fact, I actually want to add one more thing here. I want to add a border just so that it actually looks like it's surrounded in something. So to do this is actually kind of hard. I was struggling to make the border last time, but I think what you do is you go outline, uh, oops, not outline button. This should be outline input border. So that's what we're putting here for border. This just say, you know, outline an input field with a border. And then inside of here, what we need to do is actually put, I think, a border sign or something along those lines. So I believe it is border side, and that is equal to border side. And inside of border side, what does it take? It has a color and a width. So we're going to go width. And we'll make that however wide we want to be. I'm just going to make it five pixels wide. And then for the color, what do we want this to be? I'm going to say colors dot and let's just make it black. You guys can, of course, change that to be whatever you want. Uh, but for me, I just prefer to have it that uh, actually let me get rid of that. OK, so now we have the border. Now all we need to do is add this method for on pressed. So I'm kind of all over the place here, but hopefully you guys are following. So let's add a method. Let's say void click. And this is what will be called now when we press this button. OK, so I know this looks like a mess, but <laughs> again, hopefully it makes sense. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to set this name equal to whatever the controller text is. And then we're actually going to navigate over to the next page. So I'll show you how this works. But let's go this dot name equals controller oops dot text like that. OK, and then what we're going to do is navigate over to the other page. So first of all, let's go to main dot dart. And rather than rendering my home page, let's start by rendering this login page. So the login page, which oops, if I can find it here, uh, is just simply going to have that one field on it. We'll render that to start. And then when they press the button, we'll move over to the message page where we'll know what who the author is. And then from there, they can move back. They can change their name, so on and so forth. All right. So instead of my home page, let's go login page like that. And do we have login page imported? We do. Awesome. We imported login at the top there. So I'm going to close that. So we have home is equal to the login page. So now technically we should be rendering this. And before we even move any further, let me actually just see if this is working. And awesome. There we go. So this is what it looks like. This is kind of the field we've created. Of course, change anything you want, but we have a nice border. It says type your name. We have the person icon and we have the little check mark. So if I type something, blah, 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 blah. Perfect. Looks good to me. OK, so now we need to make a way to actually navigate over. So to do that, we're actually going to type navigator like that. And we're going to say dot. And I believe this is push. So the way that this navigator thing works is essentially you can think of this as a stack. So when you push a page onto the navigator, it goes to the top of the stack, which means that is the page we're currently going to be viewing. So think like a stack of plates, right? If I push a plate on top of the stack of plates, then that is the current plate. That's the plate I can see. It's at the very top. If I pop that plate, then what that means is I'm popping from the very top and I'm removing that plate. So you're going to see how this works when we actually navigate over. But the whole point of this navigator class is to keep track of where you've gone. So if I keep pushing different pages onto the navigator class, every time I press back, I will go in the opposite order, um, like back through the pages, right? So the most recent page I was on, I'll go back to that one and then back to the previous one and so on and so forth. So that's how this thing kind of works. So the main methods we're going to use is push and pop. Uh, so you can pop, meaning simply just go back to wherever I came from. That's what that is saying. Or you can push, which means go to this page that I'm about to show you. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Uh, but anyways, we're going to go navigator dot push. We're going to type context and then we're going to do material. Oops. If I can get this going here, material page root, which is just telling us, okay, we're moving to a next page. And inside of here, I need to type builder. And this is kind of a lot. It's not, doesn't make perfect sense. And I need to do context arrow. And then I need to pick where I actually want to go, which in this case is going to be my home page, which is right there. OK, so let me save that. Uh, did I import my home page? Oh, I did import that or it automatically imported, I guess, when I did this. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying, OK, we're going to navigate 
uh, with the current context, which is just a variable that tell we need to pass when we're doing this. Uh, we're going to go material page root. This has a builder parameter here. This takes a context and simply calls my home page. So that's what this is doing. It's just pushing this onto the navigator stack and then we'll load my home page. And you'll see that when we're on my home page, if we click the back arrow, we simply pop off the stack and we can go back to where we came from. So let's actually have a look at this. All right, so if I'm in here now and I do hello and I press that button, you can see that brings us over to this page. And if I cl click the back arrow, it brings us back to the original page. So that's what this navigator class does. You can see there's these nice animations and clicking that back arrow actually drops it down, whereas pressing the arrow um, to go to the next page brings it up, right? So there's specific animations for each uh, operating system when you use this navigator class and that's why we're using that we could technically just render a widget in place of where we are but this is a better way to kind of deal with navigating between separate pages all right so now we're here and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to type say hello or something like that and oops jello that's fine you can see that the name is tim so now we need to handle how can we actually change the name we've got the name they're typing it in but we need to actually pass that to my home page so that it can use it properly all right so we have that click you know whatever this dot name equals controller dot text navigator dot push now let's go to my home page and let's change this so that rather than just using tim here we're going to use whatever name we actually pass to my home page so since my home page is a stateful widget what i'm going to do is i'm going to say string oops actually final final string name like that and then let's go my home page and inside of here we're just going to say this dot name so we're simply just setting up a constructor here that says okay every time we make a new home page pass me uh, a name right so that when we load this we can just pass a name in and then it will use that as the author now we need the same thing here uh, so instead of using what do you call it instead of using tim in new post we're going to say widget dot yep dot name like that and that should be all we need to do on the my home page side to actually get this operating properly so now let's go back to login.dart and notice that we're getting the squiggly line now on my home page so all we need to do is simply pass it a name so we'll just say this dot name so now whenever we go to my home page we give it a name and hopefully it's going to use that as the author so let's check this uh oops uh, unimplemented handling of static target already change. I think that just means I need to reload this. Not sure. I just think it can't handle that. Um, if we in the hot reload, if we do something crazy like that. Okay. So restart application looks like this is working. Let's try this now. Hello. Let's press the check button brings us over here. Let's type something and there we go. Now the author is hello. So let's go back. Let's change this to be Tim like that. And now let's type something. And now the author is Tim. So the author changes based on whatever we type in on that first page. Now you may have noticed that when I go between these two pages here, uh, it doesn't save the messages that we had there. That's fine. We're going to deal with all that once we start looking at the database stuff and how we actually populate this list originally. Uh, but for now, I think that's all I'm actually going to do in this video. So quick recap there. What we did here is separate everything out into a bunch of different files. We worked on this login page and then we worked worked on uh, actually getting it so that we could change the author based on the name that the user typed in. So that's kind of the start of say if we wanted to have some kind of login system. Now, obviously, when we move to the next page, we know what user is there and we can do something with that user. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you again in another Flutter tutorial.